Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the split toning tab that's found in the develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. With the split toning tab, you could give your highlights and shadows a color tint or tone independently of one another. For example, you could give your highlights a warm yellow tone while simultaneously giving your shadows a blue cool tone. A lot of photographers like to do this for purely creative reasons, just to give their images a unique look. A lot of times, though, some photographers like to do this to give their image a very specific look. It could be an old-time film look or a cross-processed film look. That's when you use the incorrect chemicals to process a specific type of film. For example, you may have shot with color negative film, but you use chemicals from color slide film to develop it. Well, when you did that back in the film days, it gave that, that those images a very unique look. And a lot of people like to imitate these looks with split toning. Now, as you look at the split toning tab, you can see that it really has two major sections, but it's very simple. There's just highlights and shadows, and each of those sections has two sliders in it, U and saturation. And if you come in and you want to pick a hue for your highlights and you want to let's say pick something warm if you just start moving the slider you won't see anything happen that's because saturation is at zero so to begin to see something you should move saturation off zero another way you could easily accomplish to see what color you're kind of dialing in is to hold the alt or option key as you move the hue sliders it's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And when you hold it in and click on the Hue slider, you'll see the colors. So you can see as I move the slider, we're going through all the different colors. We could give that color tone to the highlights or, color, or that tint to the highlights. When I let go of the Alt or Option key, the colors disappear, even if I move the slider. So as long as you hold that Alt or Option key in, you have temporarily put saturation at 100. So I mentioned we could dial in a warmer hue for the highlights, then take the saturation slider, move it to the right to give the crux saturation for your specific image and your specific taste. So we could dial that in. Now, similarly, we could jump down to shadows, and I want to give that a cooler tone. So I'll hold the Alt or Option key in, Again, it's Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, click on that U slider and give that a cooler tone. Let go of everything, and you can see it reverts back to as though I didn't do anything. So I'll just move the saturation slider to the right to get that saturation into the shadows. Between those two major sections, you'll see there's a balance slider. That just allows you to balance out your setting. In this image here, we have a lot more shadows than I do highlights. And if I don't want those cool tones to dominate the image, I could go to the balance slider and upset the balance. Move it more to the right, and I'll make the highlight tone that I dialed in more dominant through the image. So it's going to start to affect the midtones. And if I keep moving it to the right, it will actually start affecting the shadows as well. Conversely, if I take that balance slider and move it to the left, whatever I dialed in for my shadows tone or tint will start to bleed over into the midtones and then eventually dominate the highlights as well. So you could come in with balance and kind of fine-tune it to, to fit your image and your creative vision for that scene. If you want to reset any of the sliders, of course, you could just double-click on the name. You could do that anywhere throughout Lightroom. Another way to reset the major sections is to just double-click on the word, let's say, highlights. If I double-click on it, it will reset those two sliders. Another way is to hold the Alt or Option key in. Again, it's Alt if you have PC option. If you have Mac, and you can see it turns into Reset Highlights and Reset Shadows. 
So I could simply single click on those sliders and they'll be reset. Another way to pick a color for either the highlights or the shadows is to use the color picker. And to do that, you can see there's a little swatch right here. If I click on that, we've opened up the color picker. And if I hover over it, you could see my cursor turns into an eyedropper. So I could simply click somewhere in the image and it will pick that color, in this case, for the highlights. And I could di dial in it or click anywhere to bring in the color. I also could just drag around to try to find a color. If there is a color in the actual image I want to use as the color tint for either the highlights or shadows, I could do that as well, but it's a little tricky to do it, meaning you just can't go over the image and click on somewhere. It won't work. You'll just zoom in. What you need to do is open up the color picker by clicking on the swatch, hover over the color picker so you get the eyedropper, click with the left mouse button, then drag while holding that left mouse button in over the image. Now you see as I move around, I'm getting different color tints or tones for the highlights. And as I move around, you could see that the little pixel that is on our color picker jumps around as my eyedropper goes over a very specific color. So I could get something like right here. So that's how you would pick a color that is actually in the image. Personally, let's just stay with our things there. There's a slider here. This is our saturation slider. That's the same slider that is right here. It's just available here. So you could come in and affect saturation by moving that slider around. This number here is our hue. And you could really adjust that by hovering over it. And you could see the cursor turns into a little hand with a double horizontal arrow. That's called a scrubby slider. If we left click on that and then just drag our mouse right or left, we're going to affect the hue. So you could actually move both sliders right here inside of the color picker if you'd like to. And when you're done with the color picker, just click the X. Now most often, the split toning tab is used in conjunction with the tone curve. And a lot of photographers will come to the split toning first and get the tones, the color tones or color tints they want for the highlights and shadows. Then they'll jump up to the tone curve and they'll do something here which gives it the look they want. For example, if they want that old time film look, they'll often go, they're in the point curve by the way, and we covered this. I have an entire video on the tone curve, so I won't get very specific about the different things you could do with the tone curve. I'll only be talking about how it relates to the split toning tab. And what we could do is go to the down lower left hand corner of the point curve and just click and drag it up. And you can see how it kind of lowers contrast, kind of gives that film look. You might want to come over here on the right side too and move that as well to kind of give that look. So you use the tone curve often with split toning to give your image that kind of look or feel. To reset the tone curve, probably the easiest way is to use this drop down and go up to where it says linear. Another way is just to right click on the curve and go to flatten curve and you could reset the tone curve. And we did cover that in that other video. Another application that people often like to do or use with the split toning is with a black and white image. You could actually tone your black and white image. So you could go to black and white, then go to split toning. And again, I'll hold that alter option key in and dial in a color. And you could see how we could give it kind of a yellow tone. And same thing with shadows, maybe. Or dial in, you know, that, that kind of weird, cool tone over there. And pull that up, pull that up. So you could kind of colorize, for, it's not really a correct term, a black and white image. You're basically giving a black and white image a color tone. You most often see this with Instagram. A lot of Instagram filters do this. And a lot of people like to emulate um, Instagram looks. And you could do that with the black and white image and split toning. 
very easy to do, and it's very creative thing. You could really, um, you're, the sky's the limit, and, you know, of what colors you could make things or how you could make something look uh, or give it a look and feel all its own by utilizing this. If you go to Instagram and you look uh, for the hashtag street fashion, you'll often see these looks on Instagram on that hashtag. There's, it's very popular in street fashion, which actually is a thing with people modeling clothes and accessories on the street. So um, very popular and something you may want to learn how to do. And that really is split toning. It's relatively simple, but a very powerful tool that is often used in very creative ways. Personally, I don't use it a lot because I don't need to use it for the type of photography I most often do. But a lot of people are in split toning and they know all these different types of recipes, they're called, to dial in specific looks for their image. One thing I will note, if you don't see any, any sliders, look over here to the right, these little black triangles. These are called expose triangles. And you see when I clicked on that triangle, my highlights shadows are gone. And if I click on that triangle, my shadow sliders are gone. Just the balance slider remains. So look for those expose triangles. Just click on them so you could see the um, sliders for each of the two major sections in split toning. That's really it for split toning. Very powerful tab in Lightroom and something you could probably experiment with for a long time and get a look that is all your own. Really is possible with split toning. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.